I know there's already a ton of information out there about olive skin these days. I mean, lucky you, because that was not the case when I was growing up. But these days, and especially in the last 5 to 10 years, there has been a lot more focus on olive skin tone, which I am so glad about because it's about time. But I think that's also kind of the problem now. So many sources of information are saying a lot of different things about olive skin. And I think it's time that we simplify it all down to the basics of what it means to have olive skin, how to know if you have olive skin, and tips for you if you do have olive skin. For those of you that are new to my channel, this video is actually part 3 of my color series. Part 1 was all about seasonal colors and part 2 was all about skin tones. But I deliberately left out olive skin in my skin tone video just so I can dedicate an entire video to it. You're welcome. <laughs> so if you haven't watched part 1 and 2, I highly recommend you do that first because I cover a lot of foundational knowledge about color analysis and what makes up a skin tone in the first two parts. So watch them, it's worth your time. <laughs> In my skin tone video, I explained how essentially all a skin tone is from a visual perspective is a mix of red, yellow, blue, and white. And how your skin tone appears depends on the ratio of these pigments and how much of each pigment is shown through in your skin. For olive skin tones, we're called olive because of the distinct green hue in our skin, right? And green is a mix of yellow and blue, so olive skin tones have both yellow and blue showing through in our skin. Our skin still needs some amount of red for it to appear like human skin. So in order to have olive skin, we need a significant amount of yellow and quite a bit of blue present in our skin with a relatively small amount of red pigment. That's why some people say that olive skins don't blush, which is sort of a myth and I'll explain why it's not necessarily true later on. This lack of red pigments is also why olive skin tones can easily look more sickly or have a distinct sallowness to their appearance. When we say someone has a healthy color to their skin, we're referring to how much redness is showing through the skin because red is a clear indicator of blood flow. If you think about the skin color of a corpse, it obviously lacks that redness. And since olive skin tones have less red pigments showing through than other skin tones, it explains why our skin has more of that sickly appearance or sallowness to it. Now, just like any other skin tones, olive skin tones are also on a spectrum, which means that the amount of red pigments present in our skin can vary from one olive skin tone to another. So if we were to think about the amount of red in the skin on a spectrum, as more redness starts showing through the skin, it starts to look more and more like this brown instead of green. And once the skin loses the green cast completely, we no longer categorize those skin tones as olives. Why the amount of redness is important important in determining olive skin tones is because green and red are complementary colors, so they're meant to cancel each other out. So when we mix green and red, it results in a gray color. So some olive skin tones that have a little more red pigments than others tend to have a bit of a grayish cast to their skin. So if you're not sure whether or not you have olive skin because you have more of a grayish cast to your skin than green, there's a good chance that you might be sitting somewhere within this middle range of the spectrum. Now that we've covered what it means to have olive skin, let's take a look at some of the common myths. Number one, olive skin tones are all cool. This is not true at all. Olive skin tones can be warm or cool. If you remember from my video on seasonal colors, I explained that in color analysis, how we determine the temperature of a color is by looking at the amount of yellow or the amount of blue that's present. So if we're looking at all these different shades of greens, these greens are considered to be warm colors and these ones are cooler greens. And with skin tones, it's the exact same concept, but it's just a little less obvious because we're looking at human skin and it's not just different shades of color. So just like any other skin tones, olive skin can be either warm or cool depending on whichever color is more present in your skin. Why people say that all olive skin tones are cool is because like I explained in my last episode, we're confusing skin tone with seasonal colors. Having a warm skin tone and having warm colors as your best colors are two separate things. Like I showed you before with Rihanna as an example, Rihanna has a warm olive skin tone but she looks great in cool colors because cool colors offset the excess warmth in her skin. 
So when people say all olives are cool, it's sort of a general belief that all olives look better in cool colors because warm colors will bring out too much yellow. But that theory doesn't apply to everyone. If we look at Mila Kunis, for example, she has a warm olive skin tone, but she still looks great in warm colors. So a statement like all olives are blank is such an overgeneralization. And I think that's why it causes a lot of confusion about olive skin or even just about skin tone in general. Now, there's also the belief that olive skin tones are neutral, which I think is a more accurate statement than just saying that all olives are cool, but there is a slight difference when it comes to neutral versus olive skin tones. Having a neutral skin tone means that you're sitting closer to the middle of the temperature spectrum. So technically, you will fall on one side of the spectrum, but you'll never be on the extreme ends on either side. Why olives are compared to neutrals is because we essentially have the two conflicting colors that are both quite visible in our skin tone. So if you have olive skin, your dominant tone between the two is always going to be offset by the other color to a certain extent. So just like neutral skin tones, olive skin will never be on the extreme ends on either side of the temperature spectrum. The difference between neutral and olive skin tone is this. It's the amount of red in your skin. If we were to say that neutral skin tones have a balanced amount of yellow and blue because they don't lean too heavily on one side or another, we could technically say the same thing about olive skin. But what neutral skin tones also have is a balanced amount of red in their skin that prevents it from looking green. So their skin looks more, well, neutral. But olive skin tones don't have as much red, so that's why our skin has that distinct green hue. So if we're calling olive skin tones neutral, it makes sense from a temperature perspective, but visually there is a clear difference between what we would call an olive skin versus what we would call a neutral skin. Now all this talk about red leads me to the next myth, which is that olive skins don't blush. I'm kind of half and half on this opinion. Logically it makes sense because like I just explained, what makes our skin appear olive is the lack of red compared to other skin tones. But we also have to consider the overall lightness of the skin. Imagine adding red to white versus red to black. We only need to add a hint of red to the white in order for the white to change to this pink color. But we need a lot more red in order to change the black into something else. So even if you have olive skin, if you have really fair skin, then the redness can still show through. Julianne Moore is a great example. When we think of fair olive skin, Julianne Julianne is the number one example or reference that a lot of people use. And in some photos, Julianne's skin is so clearly olive, but in other photos, it's not as obvious because there's a lot of redness showing in her skin. So if we're just looking at the ratio of these three colors, it makes sense that olive skin tones have less red, but we also need to consider how light the skin tone is because even just a small amount of red can show through a lot more easily if you have fair skin. So how can you find out if you have olive skin. Here are some common and not so common hints that can help you determine if you have olive skin. Number one, you don't look good in colors that are too warm or too cool. Like I said, us olives have conflicting colors in our skin tone and we don't have enough red to neutralize these colors. So a color that's really far on either end of the spectrum clashes with our skin tone because it either brings out too much yellow or too much blue from our skin. If we go back to Mila Kunis as an example, between warm and cool colors, she does look better in warm colors. The colors that are too far in the warm spectrum clashes with Mila's skin tone. So if you have a tendency to stick to neutral colors in your choice of clothing because you just feel like you can't really wear either warm or cool colors, it might be an indication that you have olive skin. Number two indicator, neutral foundations or concealers are not the perfect match for you, but they definitely work better than warm or cool shades. If you have warm olive skin, you've probably been told at one point to try a warmer shade of foundation because your skin appears yellow but you probably found that those shades are too warm on your skin. Or if you have more of a grayish or cool olive skin, you might have tried on a cool shade of foundation and found that it's too pink. But if a neutral shade of foundation is not a 100% match, but it works much better than a warm or a cool shade of foundation, that might be an indication that you have olive skin. Because neutral skin tone and olive skin tone share the same characteristic of not leaning too heavily towards 
one side of the temperature spectrum. So neutral actually works better for your skin tone if you have olive skin. I mean, these days more and more companies are coming up with options for olive skin. So you might have already found your perfect shade, but if you're still struggling and trying out different shades, see if a neutral shade works better on you and you might be surprised. Number three. Okay, this one is more of a personal opinion and I don't have any other proof to back this up other than from my own experience, okay? I find that I can wear more variety of colors when I'm tan. So here's where I'm coming from. Have you ever noticed that when you tan, your skin becomes more red? And I'm not talking about getting sunburned here. I'm talking about when you actually tan and not burn, your skin of course gets darker, but it also gets slightly more red. So in my case, when I tan, my skin starts to show this deeper reddish color. And if you look at people who spend a lot of time in the sun, their skin is definitely not burned, but there is a clear redness in their skin. Like I mentioned earlier, neutral skin tones appear neutral compared to olives because their skin has more red. So my theory, or at least my experience, is that my skin as it tans gets darker but also more red, so it looks less green and more neutral. Uh -huh. And actually, summertime's the only season when I'll be able to find some colors in my closet. 90% of my clothes are neutral colors, and that remaining 10% are all summer clothes. I'll show you what I mean with some visuals. I just came back from Mexico at the end of last month, so if we compare my skin tone from before and after Mexico, can you see how much more green my skin looks before? for the tan. Here's another comparison. This one was filmed in the same room and the lighting was slightly different, but still, I think the difference is huge. So if you feel like you can wear more variety of colors in the summertime or when you're tanned, that might also indicate that you have an olive skin tone. Now here come some practical tips based on my experience as an olive skin tone. Tip number one, our skin tone is our best asset. I know there's probably a lot of olives out there that are frustrated with your skin tone because it's so tricky with finding the right colors as an olive skin. It definitely took me a long time and a lot of trials and errors, but over time I also realized that skin is actually one of my best assets because olive skin tone has such a richness to the look and it has this certain opaque quality to it that makes the skin look so full. And when you look at a lot of these celebrities that have olive skin, they have this sophisticated and elevated look to them that makes them look expensive. So I'm a true believer that our skin tone is actually one of our best assets. And in order to show it off as an asset, we have to cover less of it. To tell you my experience, I stopped wearing foundation a number of years ago because I always struggled with finding the right shade of foundation for my skin tone. And I just felt more and more like my skin was looking too cakey with more makeup. But that's when I started getting compliments about my skin. I've never thought that I have great skin. Skin. My skin is oily, it's acne prone, I have huge pores. I didn't even know that my skin was something to receive compliments about. And it wasn't until I started wearing less makeup and showing more of what my skin actually looks like that people started noticing my skin more and saying compliments about it. So fast forward to today, I truly believe that less is more for our skin tone. So I'd much rather take care of the condition of my skin rather than trying to hide it with makeup. I mean, that applies to all skin tones in general, but olive skin tones especially, I think taking care of your skin is a much more worthwhile solution for you. Tip number two, blush is your best friend. Olive skin tone lacks red. I think I've made that pretty clear. <laughs> so what our skin needs is color. So if you have olive skin, don't ever, ever skip blush. I choose not to wear foundation, but I never skip blush. Another tip for choosing the right blush color, and this may not apply to everyone, but if you're the type that looks better with muted colors than bright colors like me, you should always pick a color that is one shade darker than what you think would look good on you. I found that this trick always works for me, not only for blush colors, but also for the right lip colors. So if I see this pink lipstick color that I think is going to look nice on me, I'll deliberately buy a color that is a shade darker and that always seems to do the trick for me. And number three, not so much a tip, but more so a word of encouragement, I guess you can say. Olive skins are a lot more common than you think. Like I mentioned, there's been a lot more awareness about olive skin tones in the last decade or so, which I'm so glad about, but I think there's still some stigma of olive skin tones being a very rare thing. But think about it. In the end, everything's on the spectrum, so there's so many variations of different skin tones in this world, and your chance of having slightly more or slightly less of a pigment for your skin to appear a little more green than someone else, that chance is probably higher than you think.
I hope you found this video helpful. If you haven't taken a look at my other videos yet, this would be a good place to start. I'll see you in my next video and until then, stay neat and stay gorgeous.